G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for some more AFL trade content. Today, we're gonna to be looking across all the trade period rumors and stuff like that and organizing them team by team so you can get a bit of an insight as to what each club in the league is looking at this off season. Now, it is still round 23 as I record this. North Melbourne have just knocked off Gold Coast. West Coast haven't played Adelaide yet, but that's obviously gonna have an impact on the trade period and where picks land and stuff as well. But in today's video, what I'm gonna do is go through the all 18 teams alphabetically and give you a little bit of a snapshot at what their offseason might look like in terms of trade targets and potentially what other things they've got to consider. Because there are 18 teams, I'll have to only give you a brief synopsis of what's happening and some teams have a lot more going on than others. Before we crack into Adelaide and beyond, if you do us a favor and if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, that would be much appreciated if you could hit that red button helping to grow the channel. It's a big goal of mine right now. And while you're there, why don't you go click the top link in the description and make a game day squad team and join in all the fun. It is the only fantasy platform that is going to be operating during the final series. I just got my roommate, my English roommate, up with the team. He's starting to like AFL and he's assembled a team of 22 and the great thing is he can play throughout this final series and beyond because whatever players you get now in this fantasy league, you carry on into future seasons. So go check it out. You'll be helping the channel. All right, we'll start with the Adelaide Crows in terms of what they're doing this off season. And it's a relatively quiet one. Obviously, the last couple of ones, they've uh, taken home Jordan Dawson and Isaac Rankin. They hold picks 6, 19, and 23. Bear in mind, the round hasn't actually finished yet. So these picks could change. In terms of who they've been publicly linked to, there was a brief suggestion that they may be interested in Western Bulldogs out of contract utility player Bailey Williams. Back in June, it was reported that Bailey Williams and the Western Bulldogs were a fair way apart from a agreeing on a new contract and Adelaide was seen as an interested suitor. I think he's 26 uh, as most restricted free agents are. That would be how Adelaide acquire them through the free agency process most likely. Williams has been a pretty good player for the Bulldogs in the past. Has fallen a little bit out of favour. He's played over 100 games so he brings some experience to the Crows. Other than that, they may be on the market for a key back. They've got some key defensive issues, particularly with Tom Dode potentially leaving the club. They haven't been linked to Brendan Zirk Thatcher or Dougal Howard yet, but it is possible that they show some interest in a couple of those key backs. Then you've got the Brisbane Lions who have uh, been most publicly linked to Tom Dode of the Adelaide Crows. It is a little bit murky as to whether they've actually offered him a contract according to John Ralph, but they may be looking for a Marcus Adams replacement. They've also been more recently linked to Geelong's Asavo Radigalia. So shoring up their defensive stocks, particularly with a bit of height, is probably going to be their priority. They're probably going to play it low key generally. They've publicly spoken about wanting to improve their draft position as well. And considering Levi Ashcroft is in next year's draft, not this one, there is a chance chance that their future first round pick will be on offer for a trade so they can accumulate points in the same way that Gold Coast are doing. So that's pretty much all Brisbane will be looking at as far as it has been reported. Then you've got Carlton and not too many public links as far as I'm aware. What they probably need as far as I'm concerned is another dynamic forward midfielder, potentially a hybrid. And one player they were linked to earlier in the year is St Kilda's Jay Gresham, who will be a restricted free agent at the end of this season. Gresham does seem more likely to move than he is to stay. The Saints at this point is still without a contract. It was reported more recently that Essendon have emerged as the potential favourite to get Jade Gresham, but Carlton have undoubtedly been linked to him. Then you've got Collingwood, a team obviously in the thick of it in terms of the Premiership race this year, having just won the minor Premiership. One player that I've seen them linked to is Gold Coast Sam Flanders. It's unclear whether Sam Flanders is going to sign an extension at the Gold Coast Suns. It may be more likely now that they've got Hardwick, but the Pies have definitely shown some interest in him. They may also be on the market for a tall defensive reinforcement as well. That part of the ground isn't completely sure up yet and there's a number that are potentially on offer this year if they could go a cheap option there's Tom Cleary Dougal Howard also has been listed as tradable by St Kilda as well so that's about all I've got for Collingwood right now then you've got Essendon who have enjoyed a very listless end to the season with a disappointing finish to the year undoubtedly they will probably be somewhat in the thick of it this year they were originally the leading contender to get Ben Mackay from North Melbourne as a free agent but it does appear a couple of teams have leapfrogged him but there's still so much water to go under the bridge so you'd still say Essendon are a realistic chance to sign Ben Mackay as a well I was going to say free agent but it does suggest that they may have to orchestrate a trade for him if North Melbourne match whatever their offer is which is extremely likely <laughs> As I alluded to before, they've also been linked more recently to Jade Gresham of St Kilda. So in terms of the key back situation, if they miss out on Ben Mackay, they haven't publicly been linked to guys like Dode or Cleary or even Asava Radigalia, but there's a chance they throw their hat in the ring if they miss out on Ben Mackay if he goes to Sydney or Hawthorne or something like that. Then you've got Fremantle, who have obviously been really proactive traders in recent years. They've been linked to a handful of players loosely. Jeremy Sharp almost moved to the Fremantle Dockers at the end of last year's trade period. He ended up staying with the Gold Coast 
Suns for another year, but he's still out of contract and that move could happen this year. They've been publicly linked to Georgiatis as well. Georgiatis as well, I believe it's reported he has a four year deal on the table from Port Adelaide, but he's still exploring his options. And of course there is want away small forward Tyler Brockman from Hawthorne. It is more likely that Brockman ends up at West Coast, but I'm sure Fremantle will throw their hat in the ring for him as well. They're without a first round pick this year and with the exodus we saw a little bit at Fremantle last year, I think some stability would do them a world of good. If they can get a Georgiatis, a Sharp or a Brockman, I'm sure they would explore it. But other than that, I'm expecting a quiet trade period from Fremantle. Then you've got the Cats who are of an interesting position of holding pick eight. And then the next pick is 82 this year. So in terms of trades, their hands are a little bit tight. I have obviously seen them linked to Darcy Parish, which could happen as a free agency move. Reading between the lines and how this is being reported on at the moment, it does appear that Parish is more likely to stay at Essendon than go. It's just a case of money. But if Parish does decide to leave, the Cats, where he's somewhat of a local, has been reported on as probably the favorite to get him. They've also expressed an interest in Melbourne's Brody Grundy as their ruck situation is far from ideal. And more recently, I've seen them linked to Sydney's young wingman, Dylan Stevens, who may explore a move to Victoria for more opportunity. Then we've got the Gold Coast Suns. And I did cover this a little bit in my most recent trade uh, update video, exploring the possibility of Prestia and Martin coming to the Gold Coast Suns. Is this going to happen? I still think it's less likely than likely. Other than that, Gold Coast main priority this year will be accumulating enough draft picks to match the three first round academy players that they're likely to get. So other than that, what I think they'll do is downgrade their pick six to accumulate more points. So that means that they'll probably be wrapped up with a trade negotiation for that pick, whoever they decided to trade it to. Then we've got the Hawks who have enjoyed a very much improved back end of the season this year. Still undoubtedly rebuilding side and uh, any players that they do recruit will want to be fairly young, but they have emerged as one of the favorites to sign Ben Mackay as a key defensive best 22 player. It has to be said. He's still only 26 or so, so not completely out of their age bracket. They've also been more recently linked to Kai Lohman at the Brisbane Lions, who, as I understand it, has had a pretty good year as a small forward in the VFL, but like a few others there at Brisbane, struggling to crack into that side. So he may move back to Victoria, and Hawthorne is reported on as being potentially interested, and he's also got a bit of a relationship with Sam Butler there at the Hawks. Chad Wingard's obviously just pinged his Achilles. They probably wanted to add more scoring power anyway, and Kai Lohman could be a reasonably priced option for the Hawks. It's also been reported that the Hawks have inquired about GWS's Jake Riccardi earlier in this year, according to Tom Morris. Their salary cap is undoubtedly in a strong position, having shared so many players in recent years. And Riccardi has talent. He just hasn't been able to make it click at the Giants, but he could be a high value option for them if they choose to go down that route. Then you've got the Melbourne Footy Club, who currently hold picks 5, 15, 24, and 34, and undoubtedly in a strong position, obviously in the middle of their premiership window. And it's been well reported that they were interested in trading for the number one pick this year, in particular, Harley Reid. So that's who I would list as their primary trade target, Harley Reid. Gary Lyon came out and suggested it was pretty unlikely that Melbourne was able to deal with North Melbourne had they had pick one. But as I record this right now, West Coast is yet to play Adelaide. Obviously, there's a chance West Coast have pick one. And if they do, there has been a public suggestion that they're more likely to do a deal with Melbourne than North Melbourne are. So Melbourne's primary trade target this year is going to be Harley Reid. Then we got North Melbourne, who may or may not have pick one and two at this stage of the season. There's a little bit to play out and don't worry, this is not the last time I'm going to do this particular video. But they currently hold picks 2 and 16, as well as 38 and a few later ones as well. But they're a team who's added undoubtedly a lot of top-end talent in recent times. And there's a bit of a suggestion that Clarkson's likely to add some more mature talent. There has been some strong links. Those include Jack Billings of St. Kilda, who's uh, reportedly good friends with Luke McDonald. We'll probably want some more guaranteed senior opportunity and probably comes in and improves North Best 22. There's also Zach Fisher of Carlton, who is still contracted for next year but since he's been linked to a trade move to either Western Australia or more likely Victoria, his form has improved. I think Zach Fisher wants some more midfield minutes and he may be able to get that at North Melbourne. There's also Dylan Stevens, who would undoubtedly be you know, targeted by a number of Victorian clubs. Stevens was obviously a former top 10 pick. He might've even been pick five actually. Drafted out of South Australia, but I think he went to school in Victoria or it was the other way around. He was Victorian and went to school in South Australia. I'm not too sure, but either way, would be pretty comfortable with a move to Victoria and it's all about game time for Dylan Stevens, which you'd think he'd get at North Melbourne. Then we've got Port Adelaide, who obviously traded big for Jason Horn Francis last year and therefore don't hold a pick before 37 as it currently stands, but they've been publicly linked to uh, Sava Radagalia most prominently as a key defensive option. Tom Jonas obviously retiring. They're going to give away Tom Clure, so they obviously don't rate him. Asava would come in and be a best 22 player, and I do think Asava is probably more likely on the move than not if he's still without a contract at Geelong, but they've also been linked to guys 
like Brandon Zerk Thatcher, who's had a bit of a breakout season at the Bombers, clearly on the market for a key defensive option. You think they probably wouldn't go back to Dougal Howard. In terms of Rucks, they've also been reported on being interested in Brody Grundy as a mature option. The Ruck is far from a settled position at Port Adelaide. Scott Lysette has kind of declined. And as a fallback to that, they've also expressed interest in Brisbane's Darcy Fort. Then you've got the Richmond Footy Club, who again, having traded for Taranto and Hopper, sit without a first round pick. That pick belongs to GWS. So in my opinion, their primary trade target is likely to be dealing with Gold Coast in terms of trying to acquire their pick six. I think whichever way you slice it, Richmond would love some young talent into the list right now. And there is a pick six up for grabs. I don't really know how Richmond do it. They'll probably need to sell some future picks because this draft hand this year is not strong, but I'd imagine, and it's been reported on, that they are interested in Gold Coast pick six. They may also have to accommodate a trade for Hugo Ralph Smith. It'd be interesting to see what happens there. But you'd think locking down their existing young talent and acquiring more draft picks would be the target for Richmond this year. Then you've got St Kilda who entered the draft at pick 13 and have 32 and 51 this year as well. And in terms of their trade period, honestly, there's a lot more linked leaving St Kilda than there are joining St Kilda. Those players that may leave St Kilda are Dougal Howard. It's been reported they're open to trade negotiations for Howard. Jade Gresham, obviously I've talked about in this video, Jack Billings as well. So they may just be looking to accumulate some draft talent. I think they've drafted pretty well in recent years. You look at guys like Windhager, Machido Owens, Wanganin Miller, Mateus Filippou in recent times as well. I think they're starting to build some decent young talent there. They're probably looking to add to that. But in terms of a trade target, Liam Henry is one option for them. He's a chance to leave Fremantle and Western Australia this offseason. St Kilda is one of the handful of Victorian clubs that has been linked to Liam Henry. So he would be a good young option there. Paddy Dow from Carlton as well. In the same way the Saints went after Liam Stocker last year, Paddy Dow is uh, unlikely to be getting games in that Carlton midfield anytime soon and is considered, I guess, still a chance to fulfill his potential. So that will be an interesting target for the Saints. Then we've got the Sydney Swans who have a reasonable drive hand this year with 12, 22 and 31. Again, one of those teams that has emerged as a potential suitor for Ben Mackay and potentially has jumped ahead of Essendon in the race for his signature. They certainly need a key back. They've had a really injury hit backline this year and of course Paddy McQuarton has unfortunately retired. So they're looking to shore up that part of their best 22. It's a strong best 22. Ben Mackay is probably going to be their main target this offseason having missed out on Tom Barras, you'd think. The other option is potentially Adam Tom. Now I will clarify that that's not actually a linker that I've heard, but I'll elaborate a little bit more on Tomlinson when we talk about the Bulldogs, another target for them. But Sydney desperately need a key back option and it's uh, fortunate for them that they are currently plenty of key back options switching clubs this off season and there's a few more in the draft. Then we've got the West Coast Eagles who currently, as I record this, hold pick one. That may change by the time this video comes out. Probably not though, we suck. But they've been linked to a handful of Western Australian players at clubs there where they're unable to get a game. The two biggest examples of that are Tyler Brockman. It was reported they were very interested in Brockman in his draft year. The Hawks picked him up. He's got two young twins and is potentially looking to settle back down in Perth, closer to family links. It's reported he's had dinner with Liam Ryan. So the efforts to get Tyler Brockman seem fairly progressed. And I think this one probably does happen. The other one is Devin Robertson, who they've portedly tabled a four-year deal to to get out of the Brisbane Lions. It's something I've talked about already on this channel. And then furthermore, adding a fourth ruck to the list, someone like a Jordan Sweet or more recently, Matthew Flynn from GWS has been linked to us by Callum Toomey. And finally, the Western Bulldogs, who have two first round picks this year, thanks to Josh Dunkley joining the Brisbane Lions last year. So they hold picks 10 and 17. I think they will also be in the thick of it for doing some pick swaps as well because they've got a father son in this year's draft Jordan Croft who is linked I think about top 12 by Calum Toomey so they're really going to trade down this year to maybe improve their draft hand next year or they might be another team that goes after Gold Coast pick six so they get a pick in before Jordan Croft so that might be their primary focus there's another player Adam Tomlinson who I mentioned who nearly joined the Bulldogs last year but the deal didn't happen he still had a contract for Melbourne decided to play out there but it seems like it's not going to be working at Melbourne for Adam Tomlinson so so the reason I link it with the Western Bulldogs is because they were reportedly interested last year. And you know, key back is still a position they probably need to shore up as well. And I will also link the Western Bulldogs to Kai Lohman, another team that is reportedly interested in getting that guy as a small forward. So there you have it, guys. That is a very brief synopsis of what everyone is doing this trade period. There's obviously a lot of water to go under the bridge, and this will update and be updated in, you know, three or four weeks' time. You feel like the damn wall's about to break, especially now that 10 teams are about to be eliminated, then progressively even more until we have a premiership team and then the trade rumors will be thick and fast and I'm here to cover it all for you and discuss it with you. Let me know if there's anything I missed. There probably has been. There's a lot to try and condense into a video and talk about all 18 teams, but I've given it a crack. So hope you're enjoying the content, guys. Let me know in the comments what you think of anything I've said in this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.